Hello dear friends, I'm back to record the second part of that Almost Deceived because I really can't do anything else. I went to, had to take my uh, husband to the bank this morning and I was getting a few groceries and while I was putting them in the car, he got the heavy stuff. I picked up, I think, a bag of toasted Ritz chips or something. Must have turned in such a way that I pulled a muscle or pinched a nerve in my lower right back and hardly can, hardly could drive us home or sit on the toilet or anything. So, if you hear me moan and groan a little, that's exactly what it is, all right? But I just thought that I'd go ahead and share this second part while it was on my mind and on my heart to do. Nothing grieves us more than looking around and seeing people be deceived, right? The Lord cares very much about that. And uh, I've come to learn to, by His wonderful grace, come to learn to trust Him that He will keep His own. He, he will not let them be deceived. Oh, maybe for a day or two, or three or four, or a week. I have been. When the Lord sh shone the light of, light of His Word onto those things I was learning and being and listening into, and showed me the truth, it scared me to death. I never thought I could have been deceived. It scared me. You ever felt that way? So that is why I wanted to. It just came on me to do to share these few things. Not you know, really sharing a particular group or anything, but basically the mindset behind those groups. Because you you can find many out there. So I'm going to try to be quick with this, all right? And I just pray the Lord that would help anybody and that he'd use it. So the three or four other groups that I wanted to share that I have been duped by over my walk with the Lord. And y'all won as recently as a few days ago. It's tricky. It's sneaky. And it's wrong. But, um, let's say, here's a big one, alright? This one really, oh man, really piqued my interest. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 6 tells us, do not go beyond what is written. And I have learned that that is something that can keep us safe 100% of the time. You know, because all types of hearsays and ideas and, or these lost scrolls and this, that, and the other. I don't know. All I know is this right here. This right here, the Lord by His Spirit and His Word here has kept me safe. That's what I want for you. Do not go beyond what is written. No matter how scriptural and right it may sound, stick to this. For in here, the Spirit of God, this is His Word. It comes alive when we get this in our mind and heart. He brings it to life in us. And it will lead us, and it will guide us, and it will train us, and correct us, and lead us into righteousness. The Spirit does that by His Word. And that's another thing lead into, I'm sorry about the noise, is that another thing I about got tricked into was... Man, what a slippery slope. Was any time this book right here is called into question, run. I, my blood boils about it, okay? But I have to, I have to, I know I have to trust the Lord to keep people. And He will. Woe unto the one that these offenses come that are shutting up the kingdom of God in people's faces. 
and all these lies and deceit and everything like that. I tell you, that is more wicked than any unbeliever out here that has not yet come to know the Lord. More wicked than that is the one who has tasted of the heavenly things and went their own way, peddled this word for profit for themselves, peddled this word for a following to follow them rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. Use this wisdom and the name of Jesus Christ coming out of their mouth for gain in this world. That is wicked. That is evil. Way more than these blind people walking around out here, groping around and stumbling in the dark because the light of Christ has not yet opened their eyes to know, just like we used to be, y'all. Would you have cursed and condemned and persecuted and uh, done all these dead, evil things against the Lord Jesus Christ had you known him? And how good he is? No. And those people wouldn't either. But I'm telling you, evil and wickedness, the heart of it, is the one who's, who tries to set himself up into the very place of God, desiring that men worship him. We have to be very careful. So no, this is the infallible word of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is. Don't ever waver from it. It won't steer you wrong. It won't lead you astray. Never ever changing. And though the ink flowed off the pen of men, this is our Father's mind and heart. It says that every word here was inspired by our Father in heaven. All right? Don't ever forget that, please. I'm sorry if I acted ill. I, I didn't mean to. I just... I just... Um, I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord that He'll do this. All right. So we got on that one. <clears throat> and um, I also want to bring up... Um, Let's see, I think I had a couple more. <sighs> this about rebuking demons and casting out devils and this deliverance things I've seen and kind of got engrossed in, you know, and was all about it myself, all right? Now, I'm not saying these things don't happen. But, you know, when the Lord did it, he, it was a prophet thing. And he said, don't even go and tell nobody, okay? Know what I mean? He didn't make a ministry of that. That wasn't all it was about. Um, and we're told, you know what? Don't rejoice that these spirits obey you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. All right? These are just the common, ordinary signs that will follow the believers. You know, it's nothing spectacular and special about that, that we have to record people in their most ashamed state of vomiting and doing all these things that sometimes I tell you, I just don't know. No. Do, we're told to do the, our good deeds in secret as much as possible in private. Our giving, our fasting, even our praying, when, when it, whenever it's possible. And that helps keep us safe from pride. The Lord knows what he's doing when he told us to, you know, do these things in secret. He sees it. He'll reward you, you know. Uh, but just be careful about that, all right? That's what I want to say. The greater thing to rejoice about is that our names are written in heaven, in the Lamb's book of life, that we be able to be joined with him forevermore. So be careful about that. These, these things, too, about 
the only thing that you see is this about some big revelation and prophecy of the Lord. Be very careful about that. Lord, y'all, it's hard to wait upon the Lord. It is, but there and again, the Lord knew what he was talking about. Wait upon the Lord. Your strength will be renewed. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. You know, and, and I've, I've tried to take a shortcut. You know, I wouldn't be hearing from the Lord. I want to learn about something. I wouldn't learn in it. And I would go to men to teach me. I'm trying to take a shortcut so I can learn. But Lord, I mean, people, nobody can teach you like the Holy Spirit can teach you. He will show you things that no man can teach you. He has the power to open your mind, open your understanding. People, they can't do that. You see? The Lord does. And so then I, now I've done and forgot what I was talking about. I was talking about Oh, yeah, so these prophecies and all these things. Look, in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, we see plainly that prophecy is to speak to men to build them up and encourage the brethren and comfort them. That's all prophecy is. And Paul said, you know, rather than speaking in tongues, which is we can learn more about that too, but right now I want to stick to this on prophecy. He said, I'd rather that you all prophesy. That's the greater gift. Seek for that. That we might encourage and build up and support and edify our brothers and sisters along this walk that they might endure, that they might remain, you know, that their, so their faith might grow through these trials and afflictions and tribulations. That's prophecy. Now, I pray the Lord for anybody that didn't know or doesn't know that, that the Lord would open all of our eyes more and more. All right? And this one right here is the one that just a few days ago took me by surprise, y'all. Now, I'm going to try. Only the Lord knows my intentions. I apologize for that music back there, but you know, the Lord He has all wisdom and He does choose to share some of that wisdom with people here on this earth sometimes, alright? And there have been some things, this is not I use this, I'm using this as an example and I, I pray the Lord this is okay today. He has shown me some things some things that I have not yet to share with anybody. Because I don't get from him that that's okay to do right now. And either way, I came across on YouTube somebody that I thought, oh my gosh, they, they know of some of these same things that I have learned from the Lord. And I was overwhelmed. I was so happy because I thought, you know, I could talk with them and, you know, maybe iron sharpen iron and edify each other and learn more and this, that, and the other. But, y'all, it made me so sad and it scared me to death that the Lord let me say that, that this was a person that had tasted in the good things of the Lord, that had received wisdom and understanding from the Lord but had went off on their own way. They had left that straight and narrow path. And now they were teaching others how to find their own Christ consciousness. Consciousness. Ascending to the higher self. This is a wicked evil. Please be careful of that. I'm going to finish up. I don't want this one to be as long as the other one, y'all. I'm going to finish up with a couple of things that, again, is a great 
thing that can make us very sad. That the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? He twists the truth. He masquerades around as an angel of light. This is something I just ask you, you know, prayerfully take to the Lord for yourself, okay? There might be some scripture in it, but I'm speaking from myself right now, right when I say this. We have not been rescued from the kingdom of darkness. Forgive my appearance, I'm, I'm sick today. We have not been rescued from the kingdom of darkness. And transferred over here into the kingdom of light. Our blind eyes being opened to see the truth. That we would be given the gift to be able to know. We would be able to receive Jesus Christ, which is the way to the Father. And have this relationship for us to just turn around and condemn and bash and afflict those who are still in the dark. Those who do not yet know the Lord. That is not why. Okay? We're to walk in this world as Jesus walked. And Jesus was friends with those who are thirsty for life, thirsty for this living water that only Jesus Christ can give. He had mercy. There's a scripture that says, you know, he looked out over all the people and he was deeply saddened and he wept for they were like a sheep without a shepherd. He cares very much. The scriptures that I'll end with is um, well who doesn't know John 3.16 yes and, and you know read all around that do your studies go with the Lord let the spirit lead you I just pray only things that I might could share could help anybody it was meant for okay but the Lord has plenty to teach you and show you John 3.16 God loved this world. He loves this world. So much so that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Not to condemn it, but to save those who might believe upon him and grant them eternal life. I paraphrased that scripture. Matthew 9, 9, 13. I believe the Lord told, I'm not sure if it was the young, rich man that he told this to, but he said it, and I say it's true, that we all go on to learn. He said, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not your sacrifices and all these kind of things. Because I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. He's still calling sinners to himself today. We have brothers and sisters that are living in the dark right now. We just don't, their eyes just haven't been opened yet. But they are part of the body of Christ. And they just have not been Awaken yet. And we don't know who they are. Alright? So we are to be kind and merciful. No, not joining in with the things that they do that we might be tempted and fall. But just walking with the Lord and letting the Lord work on us. And, you know, being faithful with the one person He might have in our life right now. 
that doesn't believe. Being faithful with that little, that one soul, that one day we could be faithful with many souls, with much. Learning how to be loving and gentle and kind and how to pray for them. And learning about love and how it covers all sins and covers transgressions and that's what we're to learn because we're called to be a light into this world now we're to be a light into this world you know those aren't our enemies I, I told you her earlier who way more than those blind and deaf people and blind deaf and dumb people not yet knowing the Lord not yet receiving the free gift of grace that we have received are those that have tasted of it and have turned and walked their own ways enemies of the cross of Christ I'll let you think about that I love y'all praying for you sorry it went so long again and I'll talk to you soon Lord please help us please help us Lord in Jesus' name, amen.